This video is going to be looking at core practical 11 and 12 for the unit 6 paper in Edexcel A2 chemistry. We're going to be looking at topic 14, finding the Ka of a weak acid, and core practical 12 is looking at electrochemical cells, which is topic 16. So let's start off with core practical 11 and how we find the Ka value of a weak acid. So weak acids, when they are... Um, Aqueous are going to partially dissociate, so we can use our equilibrium law in order to determine an expression for Ka. And we can determine Ka by titrating a known volume of acid against our sodium hydroxide and then add an, a further equal volume of acid and then we measure the pH. Half of the acid will have been titrated and Ka is therefore equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions. So when we're doing this particular reaction, we are using ethanoic acid and sodium hydroxide. We're using a data logger and a pH probe. We've got our 100 centimeter cube burette, um, a conical flask, a pipette filler, and a phenolphthalein indicator. Of course, we want to make sure that we're wearing eye protection and we avoid skin contact with our reactants and products, and making sure that we take care when we clamp or fill our burex. We don't want to crack the glass or have it topple over. So how do we actually carry out this experiment? Well, the first thing that we have to do is we have to calibrate our pH meter. Um, we then pipette 25 centimeters cubed of our ethanoic acid into our conical flask. We fill the burette with our sodium hydroxide solution and we add a few drops of our indicator onto our conical flask. We titrate the ethanoic acid with the sodium hydroxide until the mixture turns just pink so it should be a permanent pink colour, and we swirl it just to make sure that the end point is reached. Remember, if it goes pink and then you swirl it and it goes back to colourless, you are not at the end point. The pink colour has to be a permanent pink. Once we've got that end point, we then pipette a further 25 centimetres cubed of our ethanoic acid, and then we record the pH of the solution, and we do that cap using our pH meter. So what we can then do is we can use our equilibrium law to tell us our hydrogen ion um, concentration. So Ka is going to be equal to this hydrogen ion concentration. So we can then use our pH value and we can determine from the pH we can find our hydrogen ion concentration, which is then therefore equal to our Ka value. An alternative method that we can do if we have a solid acid, something like benzoic acid, is we would weigh it out and we would dissolve this into 50 centimetres cubed of distilled water. We then transfer it into a volumetric flask, making sure to put all the washings in as well. We, of course, put a stopper on the flask and then we invert it or turn it upside down to mix. We withdraw a sample and we put it into a small beaker and we can then measure the pH. And the same thing, we are linking our pH to our concentration of our hydrogen ions. So how do we do this? Well, we have a specific mass of benzoic acid and that tells us that it was a pH of 3. Our molar mass of benzoic acid is 122, so we can then work out the number of moles. Now that is the number of moles in 250 centimetres cubed of a solution. We, if we want to work out a concentration of our hydrogen ions, our concentration of our acid, we need to then convert it up into decimetres cubed. So a 250 is going to be equal to 0 0.49 divided by 122. And a thousand, well to go from there to there, we multiply by four. So here, we also multiply by 4. Um, we can then figure out for our hydrogen ion concentration using our pH, and we get that to be 10 to the negative 3. And then we use this expression here to determine our Ka value, which is our pH divided by our hydrogen ion concentration and we get a value of 6.22 times 10 to the minus 5 
moles per decimeter cubed. Now, I've not been able to find many past papers on this because it tends to be that these sorts of calculations would show up most in unit five, sorry, in unit four, rather than the actual practical paper. The practical aspects may be related to how you actually carry out the titration or how you make the standard solution. Um, but And they may ask you to do the calculation, but most of that is going to come up into unit four. So let's move on to the investigating electrochemical cells, which is our core practical 12. And this is moving into unit five content at topic 16. So the objective of this experiment is to construct an electrochemical cell and then also be able to measure the electro potential of a number of different cells. So electrochemical cells are used to produce an electric current from a chemical reaction. They consist of two half cells, typically a metal electrode in a solution of itself or an inert electrode such as platinum, in a solution containing two ions. And they are connected by a salt bridge, which is basically filter paper soaked in some sort of salt solution, typically potassium chloride or potassium nitrate, just depending on what it is that you're using. And we want to connect it with a high resistance voltmeter. So when we're carrying out this experiment, what do we need? Well, we have our strips of our metal, and in this case, we're going to be using zinc, copper, iron, and silver. And then we use different solutions of salts containing these metals. So zinc sulfate, copper sulfate, silver nitrate, and iron sulfate. We then have our potassium nitrate solution, and that's going to be used in our salt bridge. And then we need things like beakers, filter paper, our measuring cylinder, of course, our voltmeter and wires and crocodile clips. Safety is, as usual, we want to wear eye protection and make sure we don't touch any of our reactants or products. And if any contact is made, we want to make sure that we wash our hands. So how do we carry out this method in order to create this electrochemical cell? Well, we're going to start off looking at the cell of copper and zinc. So the first thing that we should do is we need to use sandpaper to clean the strips of the two metals. This is just to get rid of, rid of any oxide that's built up on the surface. We then pour 50 centimetres cubed of our zinc sulphate solution into a beaker and then we put the zinc metal into the solution. Using a different beaker, we then measure out 50 centimetres cubed of our copper sulphate and we put the strip of copper metal into it. We join the two beakers using our salt bridge, so this is our piece of filter paper soaked in our saturated solution of potassium nitrate, and then we connect the metal strips to the voltmeter using our wires and our crocodile clips. We should then see an electrode potential or a voltage on our voltmeter and we then note that down and that is for our zinc copper cell. We then repeat all of these steps from one to six with our different combinations. So we want to look at zinc and iron, iron and copper, zinc and silver, and copper and silver. So just a diagram of what it should look like. This is using a copper and a silver um, cell, and we've got our copper metal and our copper solution, and our silver metal and our silver solution and we have our potassium nitrate salt bridge as well and of course being connected to our voltmeter and we get our electrons flowing from the copper through the voltmeter to the silver on the other side. So some key points that we need to know for this particular reaction, well, we must make sure that it's carried out at standard conditions. So our standard conditions are one mole per decimeter cubed of our solutions. If we use any gases, which in this case we don't, but if we do, we have to make sure they are 100 kilopascals and the whole thing should be carried out at 298 kil. If your voltmeter um, shows a negative number, your electrodes are the wrong way around. So you just have to shift the electrodes between being left and being right. And that should make sure that you get a nice positive answer. If we have a thermodynamically feasible reaction, our 
electromotive force or our EMF has to be a positive value. So that's why we need to make sure that we have our electrodes the correct way around. In order to calculate that value, we take this equation here, which is ER minus EL. So R being your right-hand cell, which is your reduction, and L being your left-hand cell, which is your oxidation. So you get your, your values working out there. So an example of voltages that we may see, for zinc and copper, we should be getting 1.1. For zinc and iron, 1.2. Iron and copper, 0 0.78. Zinc and silver, 1.56. And copper and silver, 0 0.46. Now, of course, your results may not be exactly the same as these, but they should be roughly in the same area. If they're not, you might want to double check that you have the correct concentrations and make sure that you have completely sanded down your metals and that you don't have any loose connections. So let's look at a past paper question for this. This is using um, uh, electrochemical cell to determine the concentration of vanadium-3 ions and this is from the October 2019 paper. So the two half equations that we're using is zinc half equation and the vanadium half equation that we can see here. And we can measure our E cell. So solution Y, which is our one containing our vanadium ions, is made by mixing 50 centimetres cubed of our aqueous solution and 50 centimetres cubed of what is called solution X. Um, and this is used in method one. I haven't included method one in this particular video because it is a completely different experiment but it doesn't affect the answer here you can still work out all of your answers just based on the information that's given so part one is asking us to complete the diagram by adding the labels and the dotted lines to complete the electrochemical cell we don't have to give any conditions so you can see that there are four different um labels that we have to fill in so let's start um on the side above where we've got our solution. Well, if we have a solution of our two ions already, we don't use vanadium metal as our electrode. If we already have our two ions, we must be using an inert electrode. So that should be a platinum electrode. Moving around anti-clockwise, we're gonna have this square in the top. What is that gonna be? Well, that is going to be our voltmeter. Okay. And of course, it should be a high resistance voltmeter. Again, moving around anti-clockwise, our electrode in this case, well, when we look back at our electron, sorry, our half equation, we can see that we have zinc metal. So we're going to be using a zinc electrode. And then the last one is going to be our source of our zinc ions. So this is going to be our zinc ions which will probably be some form of salt solution like zinc sulfate or something like that. So the salt bridge consists of filter paper soaked in a saturated solution of potassium nitrate. We want to give a reason why we don't use potassium hydroxide for the salt bridge. So let's have a look at what is actually happening. The salt bridge would be a um, splitting of the, those particular ions and then allowing them to carry the charge between the two electrochemical cells. So we're going to have potassium and the nitrate ions coming into contact with our zinc solution and our vanadium solution. And that works fine with using potassium nitrates, but if we use hydroxide, these hydroxide ions actually will react with the cations. So our hydroxide ions will react with the cations and actually we will make a precipitate such as vanadium hydroxide or zinc hydroxide. Both of these are insoluble solids so we don't want the hydroxide to come into contact with these cations because we would just make a precipitate instead of the reaction that we're actually looking for. So in this cell, the zinc half cell was at standard temperature and concentration. And when the cell reaction occurred, zinc was oxidized and your E cell value is 
plus 0 0.44. We want to write the overall equation for the cell reaction. So let's just go back and look at our half cells. Well, you can see that we have zinc and two electrons going to zinc. Um, sorry, zinc metal. And that's going to be a reduction reaction. So our question says that the zinc is oxidized. So this one is going to have to be reversed. And if we look at our V3 going to V2, we can see that's only a loss of one electron. So we're going to have to multiply that by two. So how does that then look when we put them together? Well, we start with zinc metal. We have two vanadium three plus, and we go to zinc ions plus two vanadium two plus. Okay, we don't have to put any state symbols here. And remember, you should never have electrons in your overall equation for your cell. They should always, always, always cancel out. So the standard electrode potential for the zinc is going to be 0 0.76. And the for the vanadium, the half cell was not at standard concentration. So we want to actually calculate that. So the way that we do that is it's going to be our E0 cell is going to be equal to the E0 value, or sorry, the E value for the vanadium. Subtract the E value for the zinc. So then we substitute our numbers in and we get plus 0 0.44 is equal to E minus minus 0 0.76. When we rearrange that equation, you should get an answer of minus 0 0.32 volts. In order to get the mark, you have to give the negative value, sorry, the negative sign as well as the value for the one mark. I'm just going to rewrite our answer that we had in the last question here because we are going to use it in this question. So the standard electrode potential for vanadium is negative 0.26 volts. Solution Y was one mole per decimeter cube with respect to the vanadium 2. And for the half cell in this experiment, it, the electrode potential is given by this equation. So we want to use our answer to B, which was this answer here to calculate the concentration of vanadium in the solution. And we must show our working here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to substitute in the numbers that we have. So our E value is going to be minus 0.32, which is going to be equal to our E naught value, which is minus 0.26. And that is plus 0.059 log of our concentration. This is the con what we're trying to work out is the actual concentration here. So when we rearrange this and we have our, get rid of the values to leave us with just the log, we get our log of the vanadium being equal to minus 1.0169. If we then take logs of both sides and we work out our concentration of our vanadium, we should get an answer of 0 0.096172 moles per decimeter cubed. Significant figures are important here to make sure that we can show all of our values, but they won't, you won't lose any marks for only having so not, for, for not only having two significant figures, as long as you have more than one, you won't lose any marks here. That's all the past papers and the content for Core Practicals 11 and 12 of the A2 course. Hopefully these have made sense. And if you're not 100% sure, please feel free to leave a comment below or check for some of the summary notes or the flashcards that are available for these Core Practicals. And we hope to see you back on the channel soon.